Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. We've just finished going over some of the most common arguments for the existence of God, and this season I thought it would be a good idea to address a subject that we've touched on before in a little more depth, eschatology. The word eschatology sounds hard, but actually it just comes from the Greek word eschatos and the suffix logia, which mean literally the study of the last. In Christian thought, this means studying the four last things. Those four things are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. That's what eschatology is all about. This time, we're mainly going to talk about the first two, death and judgment. Nearly everyone dies, and we can be fairly sure that we, and everyone we know, is going to die someday. Because of that, it's a topic that should interest us, since it affects everyone. Sure enough, lots of people are curious about what really happens when a person dies, but to figure that out, we need to make use of a few pieces of information that we touched on before. Truth 1. People are mortal. Truth 2. Human beings are made of more than just their bodies. Truth 3. Our relationship to God determines a lot about our destiny. Since the first of those truths is pretty obvious, we'll start with the second. Bodies are purely physical. They don't have any non-material or abstract dimension to them at all. If the body is physically present, it exists. If not, it doesn't exist. However, we know that people are more than just this because we have several abilities that aren't purely physical in nature. We have imaginations, for example, the ability to fabricate concepts that aren't immediately obvious to our senses. We have memories, the ability to remember things that aren't physically present to us. We can use logic to arrive at conclusions through data, which isn't a physical process and doesn't require physical input. These are only a few of our non-physical powers, but perhaps the most important is this. We can recognize goodness and make the choice to select a good action over an evil one. Goodness, evilness, and decisions, none of these are physical. In fact, it could be argued that while living things are physical, life itself isn't. From this, we know that at the very least, human beings do have a non-physical aspect, which some call a soul, but which I refer to as a spirit. It's the part of ourselves where these non-physical powers reside. On top of that, the spirit is clearly connected to the body in some sense because otherwise the body wouldn't be able to tap into any of its powers. However, when life leaves the body and a person dies, the spirit loses any influence over it and the spirit and body essentially separate. As a result, the spirit is no longer connected to purely physical reality by the body and it faces the world of the non-physical. That means how it stands in relation to the timeless God. At that point, the choices that the person has made over their lifetime become very important. They either appeal to God for mercy and happiness, or they reject Him. This is a direct result of what they've done in their lives. Faithful people, who've kept themselves from grave sins, have been appealing to God their whole lives, so it's second nature to them to do so after death. Unfaithful people, who never gave the will of God the time of day, will continue to not do so, and will reject Him after they die. Because of this decision made in this life, which continues after death, there are clear and serious consequences which no one can escape. The spirit in question will either end up in heaven, either directly or eventually, or they will go immediately to hell. This is what's meant by judgment. There's another final judgment later, but we can discuss that in a future video. Since each of us will end up in one of these places, it can be helpful to understand the difference between the two. Heaven is a place of good things, and hell is a place which is almost entirely lacking in good things. Therefore, there's one question we really have to ask if we want to understand the difference between these two destinies. Next time, what are good things? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.